Who's ready for another one brand wash day? Hey guys, I'm back with another video and today we'll be jumping right in to using the Flora and Curl line. I have had my eye on these products for quite a while and I was very excited to get to try them out. Flora and Curl was sweet enough to reach out to me and ask me if I'd be interested. And so I'm really grateful to them for sending me these products to try. If you're curious to see what I think of these products, then just keep watching. All right, guys, here we go once again over my bathtub, and I am just getting my hair thoroughly, thoroughly saturated with water, making sure that it is soaking, soaking wet, and I am grabbing the Floor and Curl Shampoo. This is their citrus one, and it has a very interesting consistency. It's like a jelly sort of consistency. It's not runny. It's interesting. I really like it. Anyway, I warmed it up in my hands for a bit, and I realized I hadn't quite grabbed enough, so I grabbed just a little bit more, and I'm warming that second batch up in my hands a little bit. I've mentioned this before, but if you are really struggling with your low poos, go ahead and really warm them up in your hands before you start applying them to your scalp. I find it really helps them spread more evenly and makes it easier to use them overall. So I'm just doing a thorough, thorough job here, scrubbing my scalp and making sure that I have really got a really good cleanse going, working the rest of the suds through the links of my hair. I never rub the links of my hair together because yeah, that would be just a recipe for a knotted tangled mess for me. I find that just squeezing the suds over the links of my hair is plenty good enough to get my links clean. Now I'm going in with the cream conditioner and oh my gosh guys I really really love the way this stuff smells. It is a very floral scent. A uh, shocker because this whole line is called Flora and Curl but seriously it's I'm not a big floral scented person but I'm finding that when companies use real floral fragrance instead of artificial fragrances I love the smell of the floral. Anyway, I'm just working this through my hair and this conditioner has crazy amounts of slip. I felt all my tangles completely melt out and I really didn't even need to grab my wet brush, but it has definitely become a habit to grab the perfect hair care brush and just finish working that conditioner through the lengths of my hair. I find that this really, really helps later on with wet frizz. If you are really struggling with wet frizz and you seem to squish to condish forever and you can't get all of your wet frizz to go away, go ahead and give yourself the grace to use a brush to smooth that conditioner through the entirety lengths of your hair. You can really see that I'm spending a good amount of time doing that here. And now I'm going to start the squish to condition process. Oh wait, got to add some more water to my hair because that really helps the squish to condition process. You may think that you're rinsing some of the conditioner out of your hair, but I promise you're really not. I thought that I was going to be rinsing or diluting that product down, making it less effective, and it really doesn't. It increases the penetrating power of that conditioner into your hair when there's a little bit more water in your hair during this process. So I'm just pulling the hair off the back of my head and doing some more squish to condish. I could tell that that section was really, really dry. And so I'm adding just a little more water to that section so that that conditioner will go ahead and penetrate and hydrate my hair with all of its awesome hydrating goodness. It does take me a while to do this, but it's so worth it taking this extra few minutes on wash day to do a good squish to dish will help keep my hair more hydrated as this wash day progresses. It gives it a better shot anyway of staying hydrated. Okay, now I'm going in with the Curl Activating Lotion. And this may be my favorite product of the entire line. I treat it like a leave-in and knock it down 
Good job, Courtney. But I treat this product like a leave-in, but it has slightly more hold than a leave-in, and the fragrance is just, yes, yes, I really like the fragrance. Okay, retrieving the precious bottle, and once again, allowing myself the grace to go ahead and rake that product thoroughly through my hair with my wet brush. I don't tend to use my wet brush when I have a gel or a foam, but I do tend to use a wet brush when I run a leave-in in in my hair. Now I'm just raking the hair off the back of my head and kind of getting those curl clumps situated on the sides, adding a little bit more water to the back of my head because y'all know me, more water is more better. It really helps with product distribution in my hair. So doing a good squish to condish with that curl activator that I'm pretending is a leave-in. It has a bunch of really good hydrating ingredients in it. So I've just thoroughly organized and situated these curl clumps. I've stood up. I've shook the hair off the back of my head. Now I'm ready to grab the gel. And I really like this gel. It has the consistency of a flaxseed gel. It's not runny, but it's not super thick either. I'm just going to glaze that over the back and in the front and rope that into my hair and begin squishing and pulsing in this gel. I never ever rake gels into my hair. It has never ever worked for me. I find that if I rake in my gel, it is too much and it completely busts up my curl clumps. Now I'm going to grab just a little bit more gel and really focus that on the back of my head. I focused the first application of gel kind of on the front of my hair. And now I'm making sure that the back of my head is going to get enough product. If you're finding that the back of your hair is becoming kind of like this weird, tangled, matted mess, add more water and then make sure you're adding just a little bit more product to the back of your head. I find that that has really helped me resolve that matted, tangled mess situation on the back of my head that I used to struggle with so, so badly. Now I'm just doing more squishing and pulsing. I really do do this for quite a long time. As somebody with a more wavy hair texture, I find that this is very beneficial to my curl pattern. All right, there are the curl clumps. Good to go. All right, so I diffused for my regular 30-ish minutes and I was about 90% dry and I wandered around my house, had a cup of coffee, it was fantastic. And now my hair is 100% dry and I did totally clip my cowlick shut in the back with this little jaw clip because I am not very good at root clipping. I'm sorry, I'm just not. So jaw clip and I parted my hair on this side while it was still 10% damp, that really helps give me some root lift when I flip it back the other way. I am now dry and ready to scrunch out the crunch. Something I haven't talked about before is if you scrunch out the crunch early when your hair is still damp, you have not allowed that gel cast to fully form and set and to help your curls stick together. So when you scrunch out the crunch too soon, More than likely, at least for me, every time I do, I get frizzy waves, I get less curl enhancement, my waves are more elongated and kind of sad and droopy. So for me, waiting until my hair is 100% dry is very, very helpful. So I have waited till my hair is 100% dry and now I'm ready to scrunch out the crunch. Not that there is any crunch with these products, but there is a very slight little gel cast in my hair. I think I've mentioned this before, but my hair doesn't tend to get a very strong gel cast. I think there's like one or two products that I've ever used the entire time I'm doing the Curly Girl Method that give me a really hard, crunchy cast. And if you like the way your hair looks, on day one, you don't have to do this step. If your curls feel soft and not crunchy to you and you like the look, then just leave them. Letting your hair sit in the cast for longer or lack thereof crunchy cast for longer will actually give you more longevity. 
it will give you longer lasting wash day results, which is always nice. All right, flip the part and start fluffing away from my face because if my hair touches my face, then I'll be sad. I really don't like that. All right, there we go. These are my results right after I scratched out the crunch with the Floor and Curl products. My hair feels very, very soft, but I can see that my hair is looking very defined and very nice. And we're having some pretty crazy, crazy weather today. So when I woke up this morning, the dew points were in the 40s. And since then, they have dropped into the 30s. And <laughs> these products have a little bit of glycerin in them. And even with all of that, my hair is still feeling pretty soft and happy. In really, really low dew points, glycerin in your hair care products will have a tendency to pull water from your hair and give it to the air. That's just the nature of glycerin. So we will see how these hold up in low dew points. I totally forgot to show you all the back. So sorry, let me do that. This is still right after I scrunched out the crunch. I just watched back that footage and went, oh, I forgot to turn around and show them the back. So, okay, this is what the back looks like. There we go. Okay, now I will come back in the morning and show you how it held up overnight in dew points that are dropping like crazy. <sighs> okay, so here I am with my day two results. I have done nothing to this hair other than take it out of the pineapple. <laughs> and I ran a quick errand and now I am just sitting down to show you these results. It has had plenty of time to settle so you can see exactly how this hair held up from yesterday. Let me turn around and show you the back. So if we're getting real, real picky, you can kind of see that there's some weird frizz happening. But I have some really pretty curls still, and it's kind of loose and beachy, and I kind of like it. So let me go ahead and tell you what I think ha 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 happened. So when I checked the dew points yesterday on my phone, let me show you how I do that really quick. There you go. And you can see in today's details that we have a very, very low dew point. Now, keep in mind that ideal dew point range is from 40 degrees Fahrenheit to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. And if you're curious why I'm talking about dew points, you are welcome to go watch my uh, glycerin video which is all right here. But the reason I'm talking about this is that the second ingredient in the Floor and Curl gel is glycerin. So yesterday I was checking my phone and I saw that the dew points were in the 40s and I was thrilled because that is within that ideal dew point range. And so I went about happily washing my hair. My hair felt incredible. My hair just really likes that gel. The several times I've used it, I have gotten absolutely fantastic results. I really think that gel does a great job in my hair. It has the right amount of hold and curl enhancement. It has been giving me beautiful results. But here is where this strange frizz is coming from. Yesterday, we had a cold front blow through our town. And in the morning, it was 60 degrees Fahrenheit outside. And in the afternoon, it was 20 degrees outside. The dew points went from in the 40s 
<laughs> down, down, down into the teens. And when I use stylers that have glycerin in them or products that I leave on my hair, for example, leave-ins, creams, gels, foams, mousses, that kind of thing, things that sit on my hair that I don't completely rinse out, I run the risk of my hair reacting to the glycerin in it if the dew points aren't fantastic. So I feel like this wash is a perfect example of what my hair does when I use glycerin in non-ideal dew points. So my curls are a little bit more elongated on the top. The bottom is holding up well and I'm having quite a bit of frizz. And what is happening is, is that since the dew points are so, so low, the glycerin in that gel is actually taking water from my hair and giving it to the air because there's more water in my hair than is currently in the air right now. So it's trying to balance things out. And in doing that, it's actually kind of drying out my hair a little bit. And that's what that frizz is, is it's kind of standing on in, reaching out to the air, wondering where all its moisture went. So moral of this story is that I really do like the products. I feel like they are very high quality, but just knowing how to read ingredients lists and knowing why your hair might be reacting to something in the product is incredibly helpful. And I will most certainly keep using these products. I really, really like them. I will just be a little bit more careful when I use that gel. Some things you can do to help minimize the effects of that glycer frizz, glycerin induced frizz, would be to use a glycerin free leave-in or cream underneath the gel and then use the gel or whatever product it is and then top it off with a glycerin free product mousse something like that so you're going to sandwich that glycerin heavy product in between two non-glycerin products and that will help minimize the effects of the glycerin also since i haven't done anything to my hair i'm going to show you what i'm going to do to help balance out this glycer frizz reaction because my hair is getting dry because there's no moisture in the air. So what am I going to do? I am going to grab a little bit of water and a little bit of glycerin free leave in. So here's what I'm going to do to refresh my hair. I'm going to take a very, very small amount. I'm going to take a very, very small amount of this leave in and I'm going to add just a little bit of water to it to kind of thin it out, make it just slightly less concentrated. You can see that it's kind of getting foamy on my hands. There we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to very, very gently smooth this over my hair. Basically, I'm just trying to catch any of the hairs that are really standing on end that are reaching up, searching for moisture. And I'm just going to coat those hairs that are frizzed up with a little bit of leave-in and water. And once the majority of the product is off of my hands, I'm going to go ahead and be a little bit more aggressive, grab my hair in between my hands and really pull. What this is going to do is it's going to grab those stray frizzy hairs and push them back into the majority of my hair. And then to do a quick scrunch because when your hair is wavy, scrunching is live. And then I'm going to do a root flip. And there you go. You can see that that pulled a lot of those very dry, angry, frizzy pieces back down into their curl families. It didn't revive any kind of curl or curl definition, but that's not what the point was. The point was to get some hydration back into those pieces. I can feel 
that that piece needs a little more love. Tiny, tiny amount of lead in. Add wada, 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 wada. Get it kind of foamy. The water will also help reactivate that gel just a little bit and it will wake it back up. There we go. See, it didn't weigh down my hair. Ooh, it brought back just a little bit of curl. All right, let me show you the back. And there you have it. If you are finding that your curls were doing fantastic in the summer, and all of a sudden are losing shape very quickly and feeling frizzier than normal, check your products for glycerin and think about using a little bit of glycerin-free products. Maybe subbing out some of your products for glycerin-free options. Again, I'll have a lot of good recommendations in that video that I referenced earlier. But anyway, Thank you all so, so much for watching this video. I hope you are having an absolutely fantastic day and I will talk to you all later.